This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good afternoon, everyone. It is four o'clock in the east. Markets have just closed. And what a day it has been. A big sell off on Wall Street. The Dow closing down about 1,900 points, actually over 2,000 points there. The biggest point drop ever by far and a substantial percentage drop as well, down almost 8 percent today alone. Uh, Driving all this is fear and continued uncertainty over the coronavirus outbreak and its impact on the global economy, as well as a sharp drop today in oil prices. Well, well, Lester, this is one for the record books, as you mentioned, largest point drop in history for the Dow and certainly in the top six or seven in terms of percentage terms. We haven't had this kind of decline since uh, the era of the big crash uh, years and years ago uh, there back in the uh, 1980s. In truth, you nailed it. Really, it is concern about the global economy and how the coronavirus may ripple through it, slowing growth, slowing corporate profits and making things just generally much more uncomfortable for the global economy. You mentioned oil. What's happened there is that production is too high to justify where prices were. And over the weekend, a price war broke out between two of the largest producers in the world, Saudi Arabia on the one hand and Russia on the other. And that has sunk prices down to multi-year lows in the $30 a barrel. Good for drivers, not good for jobs in the Permian Basin, in uh, the uh, shale oil areas up in North Dakota and other places. And it is certainly a sign that the global economy is weakening. This is not a financial crisis. This is just a temporary moment of time that we will overcome together as a nation and as a world. We've all seen this before. We've seen this movie before, but perhaps the events are not as clear in our memories. March, Bear Stearns was in a death spiral and the Fed brokered its sale. The worst financial crisis in modern times, times. but certainly the largest financial disaster in decades in this country, and perhaps the end of an era. Our financial institutions are strong. On Monday, March 9th, The stock market collapsed, triggering the circuit breakers to halt the markets for 15 minutes. This was a rare occurrence and doesn't happen very often. U.S. stocks tanked more than 7.5% in the worst day on Wall Street since the 2008 financial crisis. This was the result from the world already being on edge over the spreading coronavirus, but also because a full-blown oil price war rattled between Russia and Saudi Arabia, which was started causing the price of oil to sink 20%, U.S. Treasury yields falling drastically, and the credit markets being deeply affected. The S&P 500 tanked the most since December of 2008, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average tumbled over 2,000 points, making that the biggest points drop in history. It was a very bad day, and after this, the market started doing the same roller coaster ride it did the week before. The next day, recovering half the losses and then the next day, losing it all over again, and even more. And on Thursday, the market dropped 10%, actually 9.99%. Flip it over, and you'll see the devil in the details. Anyways, Thursday was the largest point drop in U.S. stock history, a record that was made twice this week. On top of this, the coronavirus is spreading more rapidly around the world, with Italy putting its whole country on lockdown with cases in the United States growing every day, with states like New York putting one of its cities on lockdown with the National Guard being deployed. What's happening is not good. Former IMF chief, now head of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, has even warned of a 2008-style crisis ahead unless European leaders act urgently on the coronavirus outbreak. And other central banks, like the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England, stepped up their actions as well. And so with all the panics in the markets and the world literally seeming to be under a synchronized collapse collectively, it's hard to know what to focus on and what not to. So as a full believer in the word of God, its doctrine, history, and prophecies, as well as a formal financial advisor that has been monitoring and scrutinizing these financial markets for over a decade since the last collapse, I feel there needs to be more perspective given because today's media is just telling us what to focus on but leaving things out. And many people out there feel there is more to understand than what they are telling us to focus on. And it is that feeling that I want to assist you with and maybe provide more perspective. Let's begin. 
Today, the markets as a whole are off their all-time highs by about 20%, making it a down bear market. Now, you don't need to be a financial analyst to understand what is going on. All you must do is go back and take a look at the markets during the last financial crisis. Today, the markets have been moving very similar to what we saw back in 2008. For instance, towards the beginning of the Great Recession, as things started to get bad, in the year of 2008, the S&P from January 2nd until March 10th was down 12%. Comparing the same thing from January 2nd of this year to March 10th, it again is roughly down 12%. There are similarities, and as someone following trends, this is something that I follow and monitor. Now, the narrative of the market drop is of course the coronavirus, and this narrative is something that by itself can cripple the world economy. But when looking at the markets, you shouldn't say to yourself that because the coronavirus is spreading, this is why the markets are tanking. Think about it. If you had a good business that was thriving and making great profits quarter after quarter, let's say you had some really bad weather, like a hurricane or blizzard, that tremendously put a hindrance on your business. The value of your company may fall a bit because over a quarter or two, your profits and growth would be down. That's logical. But if you were a stable, well-valued company before the storm, you should be a stable, well-balanced company after the storm as well. That's if the fundamentals were actually strong. So with that understanding, we understand what we see today in the markets. Obviously, there has to be something else going on. Because before the coronavirus, the stock market was still hitting all-time highs. Trump is still saying before the coronavirus, the markets were great. Because of the economic policies that we have put into place over the last three years, have the greatest economy anywhere in the world by far. Our banks and financial institutions are fully capitalized and incredibly strong. Our unemployment is at a historic low. So now with such major drops, and still continuing, there is obviously something else the majority is missing in their analysis. Because something in the fundamentals isn't right. And that's what I want to talk about. All of the financial market troubles you are seeing today comes from one word. Debt. This is the one word that you will hear very little about as you try to gather information on what is going on. Though it is the most important word you should focus on. I watch and listen to CNBC practically every day, and they speak very little of this. But this is the one thing that everyone needs to be focusing on. Now, debt has been a very big risk for many years. It should have been something that was addressed very early on. It was a problem since the 2008 financial crisis. But instead of the central banks and corporations around the world handling the issue at that time, they made the situation worse by borrowing and printing more money making the world addicted to an unlimited supply of almost free money. You know how the furniture stores offer financing of their products with no interest for five years? That's a very small example of how debt has been handled over the past decade. They have been distributing free money to the major corporations and banks. But understand, this is not just my own assessment that I'm making, and somebody can say I'm making more out of it than I should. In January of this year, 2020, the World Bank warned of a global debt crisis based on a buildup of borrowing. They highlighted the risk of a fresh global debt crisis after warning of the biggest buildup in borrowing in the past 50 years. They said, of the four waves of debt accumulation since the 1970s, the latest was the largest, fastest, and most broad-based, and that high debt carries significant risk for emerging and developing economies as it makes them more vulnerable to external shocks. The rollover of existing debt can become increasingly difficult during periods of financial stress, potentially leading to a crisis. Basically, what they are saying is that having too much debt brings a lot of risk and makes countries more vulnerable to external shocks. Coronavirus will be considered an external shock, something that does not stem from inside the financial sector. But this is the overall problem, having too much debt. If you remember, back in 2008, there was a subprime mortgage bubble that when popped, affected everything else. Today, you must be aware of the debt bubble because this will be the underlying cause for the next crisis that is coming. Understand that it is coming. 
There is no way of getting around it. In your own personal life, if you just kept on borrowing cheap money to stay above water, maybe it would be able to get you by for a period of time. But if you just continue to do this, one of two things would happen. One, you would eventually have too much debt that even at the smallest interest, you can't afford to pay back. Or two, banks and other credit institutions will eventually stop lending money to you. Either way, both scenarios are bad because you are not able to fund your obligations. And this is the overall risk to the world financial system as a whole. We have been getting by because when times get rough, the central banks reduce interest rates, allowing banks to borrow money and lend money very inexpensively, which allows companies to borrow money to fund their obligations while their profits decrease because of lack of revenue, money made. Does that all make sense? Simply put, the world is trying to get out of debt by adding more debt. It's actually crazy. Just as this article from Bloomberg tells, the way out for a world economy hooked on debt. More debt. This debt bubble is not just on one specific type of debt. Like the United States government debt is probably one of the biggest bubbles of all but that will probably be the last one to pop. There are many different types of debts that can be placed in this overall debt bubble. Look at this. This is the debt bubble. It's massive and keeps getting bigger and bigger. By me generalizing it and just saying debt bubble, you may understand that this is from people borrowing too much money, but you may not fully appreciate the scale. So let's look at the kind of debt that are in this overall debt bubble. In America here, we have skyrocketing corporate debt. This is from strong companies like Apple and Amazon, but also there is more risky high yield debt from smaller companies trying to make their way in the world. Then there's household consumer debt. This is the debt from everyday people and families. That's the personal debt, the credit card debt, the auto loan debt, the student loan debt, the mortgage debt. All of these, by the way, are in their own bubbles as well. Then there's government debt. That's both local, state, and federal debt. I track this personally on usdebtclock.org, which gives me this debt real time. There's even debt in the stock market financial sector with margins. That's where if let's say you have a million dollars invested in a financial firm like Morgan Stanley, you can take out a loan against that money at low interest rates. So let's say of the million that you have invested in bonds and stocks, they gave you 50% of that as a loan. That's always good when stocks are going up. But when stocks start dipping, this is where things get very hectic. But either way, this is a debt bubble. This is not unique to America, but the whole world is affected by this because the whole world has been borrowing. This video from Bloomberg breaks it down simple. <laughs> Within a decade after the financial crisis, when taking into account the whole world, the amount of combined government, corporate, and household debt has reached $250 trillion. That is a lot of money. It's hard to even imagine that. But the worst part is that the United States government debt by itself can account for almost 10% of that. This $250 trillion debt equals $32,500 for every man, woman, and child on the earth. This is unsustainable, and this is what you need to keep your focus on while the world keeps telling you to focus on other things. The bigger this debt bubble gets, the longer and harder it will be to recover. And any one of those debt bubbles that I just mentioned can pop and collapse the whole world. Just like in 2008, when people stopped paying their mortgages and were defaulting on their homes, 
It took some time for the market to understand what was happening. But when it woke up, everything started to collapse and the investment banks like Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns were never to be seen again. They said the sky was falling and the world would collapse if the government didn't take extreme actions. The same risk is in front of us. As debt keeps increasing, the risk of defaults does as well. And when defaults on this debt start occurring, when people can't pay the money back, this is how the system implodes. So from this brief explanation, you should understand more about the debt. Let's talk about what's happening currently in the world. Let's talk about oil. Because most people understand that Saudi Arabia and Russia started a price war over oil. They've heard this over and over all week. Everyone is talking about the price of oil and that is a big deal because that determines profits and revenue. But the main risk not being spoken about is debt. It's being said that the oil price war was put in place to combat the United States oil producers. Oil prices being down is not a bad thing for consumers and businesses because this reduces their transport costs and allows products to circulate around more cost effectively. So this cannot be the problem. Lower gas prices are better for the consumer and we're a consumer driven economy. Even for other countries around the world that don't produce oil, buying oil at a lower price reduces their overall economic cost. Look at the countries that only import oil like China. On Monday, their stocks tanked as well. So it's not about the oil price. This was an attack on the American oil producers who for a short period of time took the role as the world's biggest suppliers of oil. The problem is that for these companies, it costs them significantly more to pump and produce the oil than it costs for Saudi Arabia and Russia. So with those two countries pumping up their production, it lowers the cost of oil. So let's say the US producers break even point was let's say $40 per gallon, meaning it cost them $40 per gallon to pump a gallon of oil. So if they sell the oil for $50 a barrel, then they are making profits. Not great profits, but profits. But in classic economics, if supply has increased and then demand has decreased, then the cost of oil, which right now hovers around $30, whenever they sell it, they are losing money. They're in the red. Now the oil companies are highly leveraged, meaning to be in business, they borrowed a ton of money and it was all good as long as they were making enough money to pay for it. But with the prices dropping, they are losing money, not making it, and they will not be able to look for and produce oil. And they will begin to default on their debt, putting many of the oil companies out of business. From this comes unemployment and people aren't able to buy goods. So a consumer driven economy like the United States or even an export driven economy like China will not be able to manage if people are not able to buy goods. This is a situation that is raising the default risk for many corporations, particularly the oil companies. If they're not making money, they can't pay their debts. This isn't about oil. It's about debt. Debt. The number one word that is the risk for the world is the word that they speak of the least. The coronavirus is the easy scapegoat for this collapse because it is an external factor that leaders and bankers of the world can say came out of nowhere. The coronavirus is not only major because it is a global health pandemic, but because of the destruction it can and will have on the global economy. Businesses not meeting the revenue expectations, making less money because of less traffic in the stores, low inventory levels around the world because of supply chain disruptions. Major industries like the airlines and hotel businesses collapsing because less people are traveling. Consumers not able to pay their bills because they're out of work for a prolonged period of time. In periods of economic downturn, people do not pay their credit card debt before they feed their families. There is a massive risk to the financial system. And if you're paying attention to what they're doing to try to slow down the effects of this virus to the financial system, it's the central banks lowering interest rates like what the Fed and Bank of England just did, the Fed pumping billions of dollars in the markets, and the federal government proposing payroll tax holidays and extending unemployment benefits and other stimulus type measures. So the answer is adding more debt and increasing the money supply, 
while decreasing the amount of revenue they receive from taxes. That makes no sense. This is a problem spiraling out of control, and the world media wants us to just focus on the spread of the virus and the stock market. But the biggest risk is the debt. Watch the debt. Every time you hear more money borrowed, anything about interest rates, the Fed injecting money, quantitative easing, fiscal stimulus, anything of the sort, higher spending, it just means the problem is compounding and you must understand that this situation cannot go on the same forever. I am tired of watching the news coverage of these events and only hearing a one-sided view that is not properly covering the crucial information or perspective that we all need to know. The debt is the biggest story. It's all about the debt. When you hear about oil, it's about debt. When you hear about the spending, it's all to cover the debt. Now, if the markets follow the trend of 2008, then there will be a short recovery period from mid-March to the end of May. And then the downtrend continues. But I can't say for certain that this will be the case. They let the market get to very high all-time highs that is giving them a lot of cushion to control the narrative of this collapse. But no matter how you look at it, the world is at a point of disruption that will undoubtedly pop this bubble. Just Wednesday, President Trump called all the corporate leaders to the White House to discuss what is going on, and it felt very much like how the 2008 financial crisis went. They gave a scripted meeting that was used to try to ensure us that things were under control and praises for the president. These people keep telling us that things are great and that we are in a great position and there's nothing to fear. Building off what Brian said, this is not a financial crisis. And the banks and the financial system are, are in sound shape and we are here to help. The same banks that were responsible for the last financial crisis. As the market drops 5-6% to 6 downward in a day, they keep saying that this is not a financial crisis. Because we have such short-term memories, they are literally able to repeat the same lies they told in 2008, right before the market collapsed. Our financial institutions are strong. <laughs> I remember a scene from the movie 2012, when the earthquake was happening, the government tried to exude calmness. And right after that, the earthquake came right in and destroyed everything. The guy's an actor, he's reading a script. When they tell you not to panic, that's when you run! It seems to me that the worst is over. I do not believe that we are at the point in time where the major collapse is happening. What I expect is maybe some extra fiscal stimulus and then maybe some more action from the Fed that will give the markets a temporary boost. Something similar to what they did in 2008. But I don't know. It's possible that we're in the beginning of the collapse right now. I mean, the markets are tanking. They're shutting down parts of the country and the world that have never been shut down before, like the NBA and Disney World, for example. What I do know for sure is that we are completely in the setup stage for the complete collapse in the near future. I mean, there are still many other risks that the world is facing, like the US military base in Iraq being hit by rockets and the US responding, hitting Iran-backed troops. And again, the markets keep dropping. Like Thursday, we had another halt and the second historic point drop in the same week. It's highly likely that much of the world gets handled the same way it was done in Italy and China, which is a mandatory quarantine for two weeks at least. I would be prepared for something much longer though. If you are watching this, you should be prepared for this to happen. Many of the rich and powerful are going to their bunkers to quarantine, which means that we should expect the unexpected. The world is ripe for change and they will absolutely use this to usher in that change. We have never experienced a coordinated world shutdown like this before and the worst has yet to come because like I've been saying in this video, this is all about a debt collapse. They are shutting down the economies of the world making a grand excuse for a worldwide recession while they are consistently spending and lending more. This is the time to keep your eyes open and be awake to the dangers around you. The thing is that many are still asleep. This situation is not going away. I have made videos about the financial collapse and the dollar way before this situation ever took place. That's not a coincidence. Everyone is just following the narrative that they are designing. I made this video to provide more insight and clarity. We already went through this over 10 years ago 
and the world almost collapsed if it wasn't for the central bank interventions that they are still doing to this day, which clearly shows that those actions don't really work. When they started the low interest rates and QE, they were positioned to us as a very temporary fix that was just used to kickstart the economy again. 12 years later, we are still engaging in the same actions. When I read the book of Revelation, and it says that through all the calamity and disasters that were happening, people still weren't able to repent and commit their lives to the way, the truth, and the life, it sometimes was so hard for me to imagine this. Because it's so bad, why can't people see that God is in the middle of all of this? But I see so many people today literally staring at danger and a coming collapse right in their face, and they still refuse to respond to the call from our Father, warning them to repent. We should all be thankful that He still has granted the world time for repentance, but we should not take it for granted. So many people want to look at this as just another market cycle that will eventually correct itself, but that's not true, and that's a view from someone only looking at what they have been told to think about and not really looking at what's under the hood. This is all about controlled takedown of the world economic system that will lead to a new economic system that the world has never seen before. Don't be dependent on the government to solve all your problems. Your only dependence should be on the Most High, for He is the only one that can sustain us and get us through. You need to grow obedient to Him and His Word. The world economic system is collapsing. The life you know is collapsing. Your political leaders, financial leaders, social leaders, etc., they are lying to you, keeping you sedated until the next phase of their game is ready. The world is ready to hear that we are all good, that we all have peace and safety, not understanding that the day of Yahweh comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2-3 through three. We all need to be ready and committed to our Savior. This world is collapsing, and it will happen over debt. This is all about debt. The stock market is a distraction. Before we go, let me give a little investing 101 for everyone watching. When watching bonds, understand, when they show the yield, that's the percentage, like, let's say the 10-year treasury, this is the yield. On Monday, the yield of the 10-year treasury closed at 0.54%. On Wednesday, it closed at 0.878%. Now, I don't want to go all technical on you and confuse you, but I just want to help you know what you're looking at. When bond yields are dropping, that means people are buying the debt. They're buying the bonds. That's why the yield is dropping. So like on Monday, as the stock market was selling off, people took that money that they sold in stocks and they used it to buy bonds. But it didn't stay there because later on, the yield started increasing. When the yield increases, this means that people are selling the bonds. You will really know that there is a big problem when the United States bond yields are dramatically rising very fast. That means people are selling United States debt. That means that they don't want to lend the United States any more money. If you want to track something, track the 10-year treasury. This will be a better gauge to follow the real collapse rather than following the stock market. This is what I follow. But they're making this harder as well too. They're manipulating it. The last point I will mention is that if you look at the actions of the Federal Reserve this week, they stepped in to buying U.S. treasuries. This was a very quiet action that was spoken about but not really given much explanation on why. But like I was just saying about the countries and organizations dumping the U.S. debt, the Fed stepped in to buy this debt as it was being sold, so that the dumping of our debt was not as obvious to the majority. It was very slick. They stepped in to buy our treasuries to limit our attention to a complete dumping of our debt. This is very serious, and I hope you're able to see it for yourself, because you can't even trust the activity in the 10 year because while people are dumping it the fed is buying it it's not real the most important thing you need to do is be prepared be physically prepared 
but your soul being prepared is the most important. At this point in time, you shouldn't be invested in the market or in bonds. Toilet paper, water, and canned goods will be more valuable to you than the United States dollar. If you have excess money, buy supplies. When the world changes, your investments won't matter unless you take their chip. Listen, the world is changing drastically. Don't be moved by the day-to-day, -day, but also don't be asleep and unprepared. Stay in the word and focus on your relationship with the Most High. We are in perilous times, and ignorance will not get you through. You must make real decisions. You must pick your side and live on it. I have many friends that have been hearing these warnings for years, and when these things are happening, they still aren't ready. Be smarter than them. Be smarter than everyone else. Live your life committed to being in the will of the Most High. Focus on Him, and He will protect and guide you. Don't be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of it as well. Don't be one that says they see all the danger ahead, but still lives in ignorance and in rebellion. It's time to stand on the front lines and be a believer, a victorious member of our Savior's bride. Love him and live for him. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Elohim 